um, here um, good you know good morning uh, from Los Angeles uh, I would uh, like uh, is, is my glad to be here and present a part of our, uh, our uh, research for the last couple of years and uh, before that I would you know, I like to say that I, I you know uh, spend like a you know majority of my career back in Iran from America in America University and over, over the over the period of my career I kind of switched the fields you know uh, quite uh, quite quite a few times I started with working on the nano energy switch to macrofluidic nanomedicine and uh, when you know where i got my my second phd at georgia tech in bioengineering working on development of um, cancer nanomedicine by you know use of macrofluidic platforms and since i uh, joined ucla as a as a project scientist in 2017 i had you know, started to you know to you know change gear again and you know try to start with the with the tissue engineering and and then, you know, for the last, you know, last um, year or so, we switched to um, immunoengineering for infectious disease and cancer therapy. And today, I'm going to like uh, to, uh, you know, cover, you know, few uh, story about, you know, about or, you know, or, you know, current research. So. Um, we, you know, so just a you know, quick background about you know, tissue engineering. For tissue engineering, we want to like recreate or regenerate the lost tissue. And for that, we need you know, different, different players. We have tried to, like, uh, to develop better you know, better cells, you know, use the, use the you know, innovative source of cells that can be, can be you know, um, you know, get easier compared to like, a, let's say, bone marrow mesenchymal stem cells. We also, as a bioengineer and, 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 the, and the polymer engineer, we always try to make the cells happier by, by providing them with the, with, the, with the home situation, with the niche. Through in, in you know, through by compatible biomaterials. Also, a presence of uh, growth factors and other uh, regulators can control the way that these cells will behave in vitro and when we are putting them in the, in the animal model. But um, there is, but this is not uh, this is not going to be uh, the, the subject of my, my today's talk. Uh, but I want, uh, in order to uh, to show how you know, immunobioengineering is 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 versatile and, and powerful, I want to uh, just you know, you know, you know, to mention that these stories in tissue engineering are often being used in the, in the immunocompromised mouse and or rats or like a larger animal. But when we have uh, the immune cells you know, in, in play, everything is, is quite different. You know, let me you know, give you uh, one example you know, for uh, like a, about a 10 years old nature, you know, nature medicine paper. They have shown that if you use the, you know, the wild type animal, the way that you know, the, the therapy, the stem cell therapy behave is totally different compared to like immuno, you know, immunocompromised animals. And the, and the reason is that there are a bunch of different immune cells that can, you know, can contribute, can, you know, can react and can, you know, can act upon the, the materials or cell implantation and just you know, prevent or suppress their, you know, their regeneration potential. We have, you know, we have shown that you know, just by you know, using uh, just by use of uh, biomaterials, there are a way to like, uh, suppress some of these activations. And we wanted to, you know, that was, you know, the, the, the one of uh, the main goal uh, for me in UCLA to develop better materials in order to see how we can, you know, we can control and modulate the way that immune, immune cells behave toward the, uh, these, you know, stem cells and biomaterials after implantation. But uh, there was a one, one main concern. For immune cells, especially for T cells, the cell lines cannot represent the primary cells. So what you know, each time we wanted to like to see the, the cross like be, be, between immune cells, stem cells, and biomaterials, we had to you know we had to sack you know a couple of animals you know uh, let's say extract the spleen lymph node and you know, remove the cells and you know start working with that. And that was uh, that that this is like a uh, this is like a, this is a regular way people are doing it. But as a as a as a bioengineer, we thought that we might be able to find a way to reduce uh, this this need and all also provide some engineering toolbox that can you know, override uh, this, you know, this everyday use. So the, the question, the research question was, is it possible you know, uh, for us to make some artificial immune cells that can, you know, uh, can you know, replicate some, the, some of the features of the actual immune cells? 
So we started with the with the with the you know with T cells. We wanted to see how we can you know, we can make artificial let's say T cells you know for the first story that I'm going to tell you today. So we we had a, like a long you know long experience with the long time experience experience with the with the microfluidic platform. We could control the the the, the size the shape of um, particles from couple hundred nanometers to couple hundred micrometers, and we utilize this this platform to you know, give us a library of particles at the different different sizes here based on some gel polymers. Also, you know, you can, you know, you can uh, simply conjugate the surface of these, these, you know, these particles or use some coating methods to coat them with the lipid bilayers or other, other materials. And uh, first, you know, first task was to see if we can mimic the T cells, you know, in terms of like a, a morphological, you know, features. Here in, in, in the lower panel, you can see the, the, you know, the, the, the T cells, the, the, the uh, you know, bright, bright field image of T cells, and, uh, and you know, the size was in, you know, for about nine uh, micrometers for inactivated and about 12, 12 nanometers uh, for activated T cells. We, we successfully could you know, replicate the same, you know, same you know, size of particle with, with much more uh, like a monodispersity compared to natural cells, but that was the, the easy part. And uh, also, as I mentioned, you know, it, you know, it, it, the use, you know, use of uh, using uh, uh, biconjugate chemistry, we can, you know, play with the chemistry. We can put, you know, whatever protein we want on the surface and whatever protein we want inside, inside the particle. So these particles, uh, for example, you know, coated, you know, or functionalized with the uh, T cell receptor and the CD8, uh, CD8 and CD4, for example, you know, surface markers, and also loaded with the IL2, which is a, which is a critical site to kind for T cell survival. But you know the the the, the harder uh, uh, question was how is it possible to mimic the the, uh, the mechanical properties of the, the T cells? Here in 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 in, in a lower uh, right you can see the mechanical properties of active and naive T cells. And T cells are super mechano mechanosensitive, and upon activation they will you know get you know get um, much softer. And you know, uh, and we couldn't find any materials you know that can like, can that that can like uh, um, you know be in that um, mechanical you know range while you know be, uh, while we are using our microfluidic platform. So we you know we invented some combinatorial you know synthesis process uh, which involved both you know physical and chemical crosslinking in order to control the elastic modulus uh, modulus of uh, the, the 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 particles. And as you can see here, you know, we, we were able to, you know, to, you know, to generate library of particles from a very soft to, you know, a quite hard and stiff particles. So, uh, and in this this uh, this hardness is not is not a, it, it is a very important feature because it will it will control how the how cells in, in body can squeeze when they are reaching uh, the tight junctions. For example, you know, here we have shown that you know uh, this, these particles can you know uh, when we are you know playing with the mechanical properties, we can you know we can uh, you know we can help them to uh, squeeze through um, uh, such a such a, a narrow shapes. And that was you know that was expected. You know we also uh, we also tested them in vivo to see how softness can you know can prolong their you know blood circulation. But uh, the thing is that, so as I mentioned, the whole idea about this, uh, like uh, this, uh, let's say, side project was to like uh, recreate some, uh, you know, uh, some, um, you know, um, T cells, some artificial material that can, you know, mimic uh, the properties of actual T cells as much as possible. So one of the main features of actual cell is, is the chemotaxi. When they are seeing the grad a gradient for some particular uh, cytokine or chemokine, they will you know, go through that, you know, uh, that direction. But, and that's impossible to, you know, to uh, recreate in, 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 let's say, in dead material, in artificial materials. So we, in, we incorporated um, uh, magnetic nanoparticle to the formulation. So they have, a, like, let's say, magnetotaxi compared to chemotaxi that is uh, provided by actual T cells. 
but uh, but you know, presence of these magnetic uh, nanoparticles you know uh, enable us to call the particles and you know just you know and control their 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 movement and not only that but also presence of these magnetic particles you know through the through the hydrogel you know uh, you know base of these particles were able us to you know to add a stimuli responsive release of cytokines and you know chemokines through these you know this hydrogel so whenever we are you know and like putting some you know let's say a permanent magnet near this particle they will squeeze and they, they and they will have a, like a burst um, short term release and then we can remove the magnet and they will you know uh, they will continue there you know like a, a slower uh, release rate also, these particles uh, were able to, you know, to, you know, when, when we uh, co-culture these particles with the, with the actual T cells, because that was one of the one of the uh, actual questions. So, how the cells will, you know, will behave when we, and they are, you know, in touch with these artificial materials. First of all, we saw that, you know, this, you know, this, uh, like, uh, let's say, this uh, interaction is not uh, going to, like, uh, harm the cell. The cells, you know, uh, were happy, you know, being, you know, side by side by these artificial materials also uh, sustain release of these uh, these you know let's say for example uh, interleukin 2 from these particles uh, could control and you know and promote the expansion of uh, you know, cultured you know, T cells not only uh, uh, it was able to control the you know the the, the long term survival of the cells but also the sustained release compared to you know uh, uh, compared to like uh, you know adding the, the same amount of uh, uh, cytokine in the solubel in, in the solution was able uh, you know, to you know make the better you know fighters so for example you know here you know we co-cultured or artificial cells with the, with the actual primary mouse um, cd80 cells which is known as as a killer cells and we have shown that sustained release of a, a cytokine over a period of you know um, um, you know, um, over than uh, over than uh, over than a week can make you know the killer uh, memory T cell, which is a very very uh, important if you want to uh, pour, you know uh, if, if you if for example if you in the content of cancer to make the uh, make the T cell response last longer and also also, also in content of infectious disease like, like COVID nineteen, which will help you know the the immune system to be uh, to be aware of the, the infection for a longer period of time. So um, this uh, this was you know, kind of the, the first you know uh, the first story that I wanted to share with you and you know if 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 if, if, if you like we can uh, uh, go and you know uh, look into the, the the publications to know more um, and more about this this so. By this, I will uh, conclude the first part of uh, uh, my, my presentation, which is about how we are, um, you know, how we can, you know, use the engineering tools to make to control the bulk properties of the particles. Bulk properties means that you know we can control the the mechanical properties. So when they are in in touch with the actual cells or tissue, they will control their behavior. Also, you know, we can you know incorporate you know chemokine, cytokine, and growth factors inside these, these particles and sustained release, you know, can provide us you know, like a longer um, and more effective therapy. In the in the in, in the second uh, second part, uh, uh, I will uh, very shortly talk about you know, how we are going to rep you know, like represent these cells better you know, toward the actual you know, to toward the immune system. So uh, yeah, the, the simple you know conjugations, simple by conjugation, can be used to you know to um, add the proteins you know, population on the surface of these particles. Also, the the coating with the lipid bilayer can make it make it more re more realistic. But the there was another you know, another option uh, which was you know, use of actual cell membrane so you can get any cell actually in you know, kind of the uh, hypothetical you can get any cell you can you know remove the cell membrane and then coat it back on the surface of other other cells that would be something like a, like a um, you know, wolf in a, in a, in a, in a um, sheep, uh, sheep dress so that will uh, give give you the, the the opportunity to like a, to fool the immune immune system for 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 example for a longer period of time or or fully to incorporate and you know, better with your you know your your material or cho material of choice 
And you know, in, in, on this, uh, this scope, we, uh, we, uh, we use you know, um, the cell membrane from, from various, various you know, immune cells, especially from you know, B cells, which are known to be one of the best antigen presenting cells. And when we coated uh, the, or particles with, the, with this you know, cell membrane, you can see you know, these are the, like, uh, the particles coated with, uh, with, the, um, you know, with the with cell membrane, with the B cell membrane, they would you know, provide you know, very strong interaction you know, with, with you know with the with the co-culture t cells which cannot be found in in the in the let's say um, regular by conjugation and as you can see uh, so we are you know from los angeles so we need to like uh, you know do something to you know to um, you know um, advertise for the for for the technologies and i uh, you know the um, things that are here like like a disneyland and mickey mouse and so, um, the the third, uh, you know, the third part was to, um, you know, to see if we can make things, you know, more realistic. Is it possible instead of the delivery of the preloaded, you know, protein content, is it possible to generate the protein on site? Is it possible to just load the particles with essential like ingredient and ask the particles to cook the, the you know, cook according to your, you know, preloaded recipe on the site of action? And that's you know, the, the, the last story that I'm going to talk about it you know, briefly. So, so the, the, the fundamental you know, part is that so you can, you know, you can you know, make, the, make the, let's say, you know, a lycosome-based you know, and macroparticles with the, with the, with the desired you know, DNA. So the DNA, you know, if you put everything that is, is inside, let's like, say, mammalian or you know, bacterial cells, the presence of a DNA plus those you know, essential like you know, um, ingredient can you know, give you actual actual protein. But the thing is that this thing doesn't have any control. So as soon as this, you know, these ingredients you know, see each other, they will start you know, producing proteins. And in order to, like, to block such a process, we, you know, we, uh, we, uh, we, uh, we, uh, we, we, we use the cage DNA. We use this, this molecule um, that is you know, uh, you know, uh, being reported before that it can, you know, it can you know, um, you know, interact strongly with the, with the DNA uh, and prevent from, you know, it, uh, from the DNA to be transferred translated to protein. But the, the, the cool thing about this protein, is, uh, about this, this you know, caging agent, is, is this, this uh, caging agent is UV sensitive. So if you irradiate the system with the, with the, with the short-term uh, UV, this thing will, you know, will uncage and the protein and the DNA will be accessible so you can generate your, uh, the protein of uh, interest. So that's, and that's uh, uh, what, we, uh, what we did. We generated the series of uh, you know, liposomes and lo loaded with the, ex with the, uh, with the extract um, the, from E. coli, because E. coli uh, is, has a simplest but very functional you know, way to you know, produce proteins. So we, uh, we you know, design uh, the, our plasmid DNA in, uh, in order to be uh, compatible with the E. coli protein production you know, uh, machinery, and we encapsulated that plus all the other like uh, um, required ingredient inside in, inside the liposome so um, and you know we we utilize the macrofluidic platform as a way to control the size of these you know these these liposomes um, and you know uh, Upon you know, UV exposure, they can you know, start you know, uh, producing protein here, for example, the green fluorescent protein or GFP as, as a control to show this, this uh, platform is, is working. The next step was to you know, incorporate these, you know, uh, let's say, a protein production in a factory inside or artificial cells. And we used another set of macrofluidic, this time, you know, droplet generator macrofluidic to uh, to you know, in, you know, encapsulate these particles inside or um, you know, uh, macro ma macro gels. And by the, by that we had the you know, opportunity to you know to, uh, to inject these particles in in the in the in the uh, um, you know experimental animal and um, you know use of the macro, macro particles these are like a ten micrometers um, in diameter particles compared to nanoparticles it gave us the, the opportunity to to make the effect you know very very local. 
For example, here you can see we injected the animal uh, in, in, in a, a sub-Q region with, with these particles. And we, we kind of, we mask one part and ex you know, expose the other part with, with, with about 20 second uh, UV exposure. And the, the part of the, you know, the particle that got the UV, they, you know, they started to um, you know, uh, uncage the DNA on those particles started to be uncaged and they started to produce you know, protein um, you know, here, just like a fluorescent protein as a control one. Then we wanted to use this, this method in an in, in a, in a, in actual setting, and we wanted to see how we can, you know, we can utilize this in, in, in actual you know, application. So, we, you know, um, so here we, we switch from the, from the tissue engineering to, to, uh, to cancer therapy. And, you know, uh, and for that, we, you know, we use you know, the, the melanoma, very, very uh, aggressive um, you know, B16 uh, F10 uh, melanoma uh, model in, in, in animal, which, you know, which and after injection of the tumor cells, the animal will be gone in, a, in, a, in, a, in less than four weeks. So we, uh, we injected the animals with the, with the tumor cells. And few days after, we injected the animal with or, or, like a, or protein production, uh, you know, artificial cells. And we have shown that if you expose, you know, if you, you know, if you uh, add, if you activate the cells with the with the UV, you have the opportunity to, you know, to, you know, to control the the, uh, the, um, the activation. And here, production of interleukin two, which is not a normal interleukin two, is, is called you no know, super two, which is like a, a specific and then you, know, um, you know a modified you know, version of interleukin two that can you know can and that T cell can benefit from that you know, much more than the regular. Um, you know, IL-2. So by that, we were able to show you know, how, um, how controlled um, production of proteins can benefit animals and how we can, we can make the, the, the tumor therapy more, much more effective. The one you know, main reason that we, we, want, we, we wanted to go after this approach is that this, this approach is, is totally localized. For example, there are you know, lots of you know, side effects associated with the different immunotherapies. But, and if you can uh, just you know, use this approach to localize the effect, that would you know, uh, that will, you know, um, you know, solve uh, so, so lots of uh, those problems. And that's, uh, you know, this, these particles can be you know, delivered through uh, just the microparticles that I mentioned, but also they can be incorporated inside in, in the in the implantable or injectable hydrogels, so they can you know, they can you know generate the protein in a in a like a, let's say in a, in a, in, a, in a features like a syn synthetic lymph node that we uh, we are you know pursuing more. Also, instead of you now instead of the use, using uh, the artificial cells to uh, be handler uh, for this uh, this particle, this protein producing particles, uh, we were able to conjugate this particles to the actual uh, T cells. And you know, this uh, gave us the opportunity yeah, to, you know, to use the, you know, the, the actual you know, um, you know, T cell, um, you know, um, T cell targeting uh, features to you know, reach to the lymph node or the, or the uh, disease site. And as a result, we, can, uh, we, we could expect the, expect the therapy. So, uh, so uh, and we are you know, pursuing this, uh, this, this more. We are working uh, on the, on the, on the, um, you know, the develop, further development of this technology to produce and, 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 and you know, offer some you know, COVID-19 vaccine. And we, 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 be, we believe that you know, uh, such, a, such a treatment can benefit especially the, uh, the aged age population because you know, the way that we are treating and you know, like, uh, engaging with the, with, the, with the T cells can affect you know, how they will, you know, they will behave and how, will, how uh, good they will you know, gain their memory. And by that, we, you know, you know, we, are, we are very hopeful uh, to have you know, uh, to, uh, to uh, you know, end or preclinical you know, trial in a couple of months. But you know, due to um, some IP issue, I couldn't you know, uh, present uh, those results you know, to you today. So the, uh, as, as, a, as a, like a, a conclusion or like a, a summary of um, 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 my point, uh, the, we are you know, biomaterialists. So we are, uh, we are trying to use uh, you know, uh, whatever engineering toolbox we can, we can gain to, you know, to help the, the biologists you know, in different fields to do their job easier. And the story that I, I told you about today was about how we can uh, use simple you know, uh, you know, methods that are being available in, in, 
the in, in the bioengineering field for a while to develop some uh, synthetic synthetic cells and these synthetic cells has a lots of um, you know um, functions and and applications from like in from tissue engineering to help the cells to survive better to you know to uh, to release their you know the growth factor in a percrine uh, way also to you know not only for tissue regeneration but also for for tropy especially for for cancer and also for infectious diseases and by by this i would uh, like to you know acknowledge uh, uh, my collaborators and especially the funding resources uh, and uh, yeah, most of the research that I, I presented today was supported by california stem cell and agency um, for the last you know, couple of years and uh, i would uh, like to thank you for your attention and i uh, would happy to take any questions